Hawatlo. My name is David Cobb. I have the honor of serving as the advancement manager for the Wiat Tribes Dishgama Community Land Trust. Dishgama means love in Salatluk, the original language of the Wiat people. Uh, and we'll get into the uh, the form that we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to be focused, if you're joining us and looking at this by recording, just to let you know that uh, this is going to be a highly participatory process. Um, so, uh, and we're, 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 we're focused rather than a presentation into a dialogue with those who were able to come. Uh, at the end of this, if you're still interested in contacting me, I'm ha I'll put my contact information. It's david at weot.us, uh, and that will be embedded within the link when it comes out. I'm happy to have a conversation with folks. First thing that we're going to do, y'all, is do uh, a round of introductions. This is a very loose, loose modified form of sociocracy. Uh, I'm dropping into the chat now the 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 participants. I think I've captured uh, everyone. If you're not here or if you don't see your name, let me know and we'll uh, by chat and we'll create another one. I'll model what I'm looking for. Name, preferred or, or personal pronoun, uh, where you're calling in from. And in one sentence, one sentence, why you chose to spend your time here. So I'll model that. My name is David. I use he, him pronouns. I'm calling from unceded Wiat territory, which is far Northern California. We tell people from San Francisco and Oakland that we are the real Northern California because I'm in very, I'm, I'm near Oregon, right? I'm literally five and a half, six hour drive from San Francisco. And I'm here because I believe that the worldview of indigeneity of creating sacred relationships and having our entire social, political, and economic system based on that is the only way through the crisis um, that we're in and the catastrophe that we'll be in if we don't change. And with that, notice in the chat, it's Eduardo, Roger, Killian, Clement, Kat, Catherine, Isabel. But it's it's in the chat. And if you, if you need some help and can't uh, access the chat, let me know and... Uh, We'll, we'll follow up. Eduardo. Eduardo Esparza, I'm calling you here from Baja, a place called Rosarito, uh, on the coast, northern Baja, California, hours, an hour south of San Diego. I am an entrepreneur. I have several companies. Um, the most significant one is an investment firm in Wall Street. And uh, I'm on a quest to figure out how to use profits to for nature. I mean, it says to make a natural capital my priority. And um, I'm also learning, you know, how to call to action other investors to do the same thing. Um, I'm building a catalytic fund. It's an inception. I'm still in fundraising, but uh, learning a lot in the meantime. Uh, what drives me here is exactly that I'm shaping in my mind a hierarchy of where resources need to be placed to drive the transformation. And uh, the sessions so far have already shifted my mind in terms of priorities. Um, I considered by original regeneration and uh, all things uh, indigenous and sacred as a priority number seven out of nine. And I think it's moving up towards one in the list. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been great. Thank you. Roger, uh, you're muted. Good thing to mute and practice when nobody can hear you. Uh, um, I'm Roger, he, him. I'm in the Connecticut River Valley in New England. Um, unceded land of the Nipmuc, Nipmuc and Nonotuk tribes. Um, I am here because I am with a group that is doing um, planning a regenerative um, event in the spring and we are wanting to involve um, indigenous people in that um, because we believe in um, the importance of what is becoming known as two-eyed seeing um, 
respecting the indigenous voices and, and teachings and learnings as well as the Western ones and seeing how they can match to help us um, deal with these climate catastrophes and build the kinds of societies that we're looking for. Check. On hi, to Killian. Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Killian O'Brien, as you can see. Um, I am, uh, let me see, uh, don't care, pick one. I identify as male. Um, I am in Korea, the land of traditionally instilled the Koreans. And I'm here because of the same reasons that you mentioned, David, that I think the indigenous way is a very much a template for uh, where we need to get back to. And land trusts are one form potentially or are of a one of those what I call nested commons, one way of creating commons when we need nested commons, not nested business cycles. That's why I'm here in this room to learn more about that. I don't see Clement. Oh, there you are. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi my name is Clement Matomason from Ghana. Currently speaking from uh, um, Netherlands, Rotterdam. Um, but um, my family is part of an indigenous uh, tribe back in Ghana, and we realized that um, well, there's uh, we we have the lands, but unfortunately we are in a minority. So um, it kind of places us in a very tricky position where we are not able to make. Uh, most uh, political, any political decision or any decision at all, because we are in a minority and uh, somehow our, um, the chiefs are not realizing that we are going basically towards extinction <laughs> um, because they, they still sit on the powers of we owe the land, but politically they don't have the power. And um, yeah, things are going really out of hand. I'm the founder of Dream Village, um, trying to set up um, a regenerative hub to train and empower uh, young people to start to think regeneratively and also to uh, try to bring indigenous knowledge within the community. Yeah, so I'm here to hear all the ideas and uh, discover the unknown into how especially um, I can engage my people to get the, the right sense of um, not this inferiority or somehow superiority, destructive superiority, <laughs> but to get to a point where we can see how we can mobilize them um, to, 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 to keep our indigenous culture back and push some development for our people. So that's, yeah, I'm just curious generally to see what other people have to think. Good morning. Sorry about that, Clement. I didn't see you. Um, my name is Kat Donnelly. I guess she, her. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm very open to that. And I'm on Paula Lands, which is down in the San Diego area. Uh, and I'm here essentially because I'm here to learn. I care a lot about bioregional regeneration, and I'd like to figure out a way out of um, corporate America and investment and those kinds of things into real true impact investment for our uh, movements that we create. So that's why I'm here, thank you. Hi, I'm Catherine Langstaff and I uh, recently am rooting in uh, the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, home to many different communities. And I wanted to say that I've worked with indigenous communities in North and South America. It's been a privilege and an honor. And like the voices that are speaking for uh, sort of the knowledge base and the wisdom and the, uh, the cultures to move us to uh, a happier, sane, abundant world, I'm aligned with you for sure. In particular, I spent time in the Peruvian Andes outside of Costa Rica, and I'm struck by um, something called, I don't know what to call it, but let's call it a biocultural land trust, where in the United States, I can buy a lucma fruit from all the superfoods from the Peruvian Andes are being bought and sold and commodified here under fair trade. And you know the farmers aren't making the $20 on a pulverized bag. And so what I'm looking at is how can we, 
how can we honor culture in place and their biological, you know, their biological practices to aggregate and protect larger ecosystems like the river that is the major tributary to the Amazon basin. Another footnote is I'm working in Costa Rica on land conservation and um, right now trying to work with some land trust there. It's very difficult in the country for them to be upheld. So if people are wanting to purchase headwaters um, and this preserve a, long, a large corridor for the, um, the taper, which is like the beaver there that, 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 uh, that will help with the carbon offsets, I'd love to connect with you. Thank you for your time. I'm Isabel. I'm in the South Devon Bioregion in England, and I'm one of the co-directors of the Bioregional Learning Center and co-host of this summit. And I'm here because how we finance our work in a way that is determined by local people and brings in um, money that is put to regenerative purpose is, is really important to what we're doing here. So I'm here to learn. Hi, I'm Mary Lou, and I'm based in um, the Squamish, uh, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh um, unceded lands, also known as Vancouver. And um, I work in monetary reform and interested in um, giving voice to the marginalized um, people and life and really appreciated the offer of this session that drew me in to learn. Um, a case study sounds fantastic and uh, the offer of mentoring is very much appreciated. And that's it for me, thanks. I don't see Nicole with us. Nicole, if you are here, you're up. If not, uh, we go to Nani, who also may not be with us. It, and then we'll go to uh, Shanti, who may also not be with us. All good. So then we'll go to Jennifer. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and I am in um, Eastern Canada, which are the unceded lands of Mi'kmaq and Willistook people. And I am here because I am working on starting a permaculture retreat and educational center, and I'm very interested in land trusts, uh, community land trusts, and the idea of an indigenous land led community land trust is really interesting. So that's why I'm here. I think it's my turn. It's, uh... <laughs> Hey, I'm Oliver uh, calling from Virginia, USA. Uh, I believe it's either Pamunkey or Powhatan land. And um, I have a bit of a background in anthropology, so I'm always looking to learn more about things like that. And uh, I like kind of finding the new connections between different projects and... Um, yeah, um, pass now. Okay, yeah, thanks Oliver. <laughs> Hi, David. Hi everyone, my name is Lasada. Um, she, her pronouns, calling from San Francisco, uh, which is Ohlone Ramatish land. Um, and I'm a grants manager at a nonprofit called California Trout. And we do um, a lot of river conservation projects throughout the state. And I'm here because I've had the privilege and yeah, I've been so lucky to work with David um, for the past year, him and um, Michelle and a couple of my coworkers. And so, yeah, I've learned so much and just constantly just, yeah, trying to learn more from David. So I'm here to like, yeah, hear more information and learn from you all too. Now I'll pass it to the next person. That's me. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for the opportunity to, you know, to be here and learn from you. Um, my name is Sonia. Uh, I'm from Spain, even though I live in the uh, South Devon region in, in England, like Isabel. Um, 
I've worked in community-based uh, tourism for a long time. I worked in Mexico for eight years. And we worked on, on bringing back the authentic authenticity and richness of Mexican ancestral cultures and how to honor them. So I truly believe in the importance uh, of bottom-up movements to empower communities to honor ancestral knowledge, to learn from indigenous uh, wisdom. So that's why nowadays I work in, in regenerative tourism, because I think it's a powerful way of changing you know, the tourism sector and working on changing their mindset and um, yeah, so I would love to learn from your case study. Thanks again for the invitation. And I'll pass Hello. it on to Hula. Hello, Wingapo. Yes, I'm a Palatine. I got excited. Oh, thank you for um, naming the Pamunkey people. Yeah, um, so I'm Hula Hilton. I live in the Sisipaha River area of North Carolina, which is really at a convergence of Eno, um, unceded land of the Eno and Okanichi Band of Saponi um, people. Um, I'm a minority um, within my indigenous, my local indigenous community, having black identity as well as um, um, an Aboriginal identity um, from a neighboring um, territory. And um, I'm really, um, interested to learn about um, how to build um, these collective movements that hold um, nature as um, the the um, the boss and the in the hierarchy, and at the same time um, um, are um, supportive of our land back movement and regenerative and um, rooting. Um, out some of these um, issues and of that are conflictual and um, our human relationships. So I'm interested in conflict um, resolution, intertribal, um, as well as um, across um, different bioregions. Yeah. Thank you all for yes. and I. I know that it takes time to do these rounds, but I hope that folks found it as rich as I did. And I'm already taking some notes on uh, potential follow-ups with folks, and I hope you will all do so as well. The next thing I'm gonna do is spend a little bit of time on a big picture overview, and then we're gonna do another round. I'm gonna be timing folks, please, uh, try, because we have so many, uh, uh, you'll get two minutes and I'll give you a heads up whenever I, uh, whenever you're at your two minutes and then just wrap up your thought, then I'll do one more section, right? And then we're going to continue to do that so that I'm not just presenting or talking at you, but that we're having a dialogue and we're just at that number. We could have a, like, we're just a little bit too much to just have a, a, a loose conversation. So we need a little bit of facilitation style. So, uh, I will be, I will be doing that, but I'll try to do it lightly. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to uh, be uh, sharing with folks is I am a guest on Wiat Ancestral Territory. I'm an employee of the Wiat tribe, but I'm not an enrollee of the Wiat tribe. Uh, my ancestors were in, last in right relationship in Scotland and Ireland about 150 years ago, uh, maybe 100 years ago, de like depending on which strain uh, we pursue. And I want to say this, my mama and my mama and papa, Southern for grandparents, they taught me how to be a good guest to humans and to other people. So for example, Uhuru, if you ever invite me over for dinner, I assure you I am going to offer to help wash dishes. Uh, Roger, if I'm traveling and 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 uh, if I stay overnight uh, in your home, I will offer to make the bed or strip the, she strip the sheets because that's how I was raised. I know to do that. I love my mama. I also want to really be transparent. She did not teach me how to be a good guest on land because she didn't know that. It wasn't part of her worldview because the knowledge of how to do that has been lost. Through And to be clear, in Scotland and Ireland, my ancestors who were in right relationship were driven off of their land by a combination of the enclosure movement, uh, but really the English empire, which is why I have a special hatred for the English empire. Not English people, I wanna be very clear about that. Empire is what sucks. No people 
right? It is a system of imperial colonial conquest and power over. And by the way, uh, empires existed on every continent where human beings were. There were African empires and, and empires in North, like empire, the power over dominator mindset is what the problem is. Um, so my ancestors were traumatized, driven off of their land, and then came to here, Turtle Island, this continent, and traumatized and brutalized uh, a, a group of people driving the, them off of their land. The point is, there is plenty of trauma to go around. I'm literally a descendant of traumatized and traumatizers. The work that we're doing at Vishkama is very clear that our point, and if you look at our mission statement, it is to heal the intergenerational trauma of the land and of people together so that we can bring this land back to the balance that existed before settler colonialism and white supremacy and capitalism and heteropatriarchy was imposed on it. So that's a big lift, right? But the point is that I'm not, um, I'm not romanticizing uh, enrollment in the Wiat tribe because I can tell you that uh, there are some Wiat enrollees who I try to stay away from. I don't think that they're like nice humans, right? Like um, it is the indigenous worldview that's held uh, that uh, is what I'm engaged with. Now, the good news is that almost all of the Wiat folks that I do know are, are kind, compassionate, loving, but I'm just pointing out just because somebody is of a certain identity does not mean that they have the kind of consciousness that I've been describing as indigenous worldview. The next thing that I wanted to, uh, to underscore is that this worldview is, um, it is in direct um, contrast with our current social, political, and economic system. Part of like the solutions to all of the problems that we have are before us, but they're profoundly difficult uh, to enact because of the combination of a social, political, economic system that is based on extraction. It is based on power over and domination, and it is based on ultimately profit uber alice, right? That the idea that you commodify nature as fast as you can for a profit. And th that idea of unlimited growth on a finite planet, like that literally is the ideology of the cancer cell. So I think that we really, like I'm going to name that I don't believe that capitalism as an economic system can be reformed. Uh, I am not trying to, I'm not fighting to save this dying system. I'm fighting to create a new system, which is really a return to the systems of love, compassion, and sharing that I believe is the human birthright. Um, quick uh, little footnote, there's a great book called The Chalice and the Blade by Rianne Eisler uh, that describes, and, and she asserts, and I believe it's true, that really uh, it's natural for humans to collaborate and cooperate. In fact, that's genetically the only reason that you, Homo sapiens survived as a species. Uh, and it's actually how humans existed for about 90 to 95% of the time that we've been on this planet. So when people talk about human nature uh, as being nasty and brutish and that, you know, it's human nature to, to dominate and it's human nature, it's like bullshit. We live in a system that has incentivized those things. So the current crop of humans, most of us do what we're incentivized to do. But actually, we would not have survived if we had actually been this hyper individualistic uh, we, we are by nature collective, but I don't believe, and I guess I'll say this, I don't believe that humans are uh, uh, angelic, nor do I believe that humans are demonic. I think that most humans basically do what the, the systems and structures incentivize, uh, but I can tell you this, in every moment of crisis, people take care of each other. I can tell you this, that that the uh, if you get past the, the polarization and treat people with kindness and gratitude, it typically uh, reflects back. That's been my lived experience. So how do we take the, the world that we're holding uh, in our hearts and, and in our heads, how do we put it into reality? So I'm now shifting from the big picture into the in our current legal system, then what do we do? 
because I'm a lawyer by training and I can tell you our current legal system perpetuates, supports, and incentivizes all of the horrors that I've just described. So it's really challenging, right? Because here's the thing, our legal system and in, in the in the U.S. especially, but the Western legal system is at its core a property rights theory, right? It is about the rights of property. And in the U.S., the Constitution is a property rights document. And it's literally highly individualized, right? And I'll, I'll now speak to the U.S. where I have some expertise as a lawyer. The reality is it's a prop, the U.S. Constitution is a property rights document that was used to justify the enslavement of Africans, the, the attempted genocide of the indigenous people who were here, the utter subjugation of, of women under law, and most white males who were here in its founding because most white males were indentured servants. Yes, they were above some of those other categories, but the classification system was a very clear, very sharp hierarchy. And at the top was a very small, literally about 5%, about by the way. So uh, like that, it's really, really uh, critical to understand the division that the empire has used to keep us from connecting, because if we connect, we win. It's just that simple. Like there's, there's just far too many of us. So the point that I'm making here is that this legal system is about property rights and the legal system can't even begin to think about collective community rights, but deeper still, the idea of Mother Earth having rights, like or, or the Earth Rights Movement, that's completely outside the framework. And then it sounds like babbling uh, to most Western lawyers to say, actually, it's not about rights. It's about reciprocal responsibilities based on an interconnected uh, notion uh, of, uh, of interconnectivity. So you get my point, right? Like what we're trying to do is absolutely the right thing. And we're living in a system that can't even really understand it. It's sort of like this, like I'm watching your all faces. Everybody's here with me so far. I can tell all at least the faces. Everybody's like, yep, Cobb, you're, uh, we're all in the right place, right? But we're not, uh, our, our legal system does not support what it is that we're talking about, much less trying to do. So the community land trust is a way within that existing system to create legal structures that will be supported even by this horrific racist, sexist, class oppressive legal system that allows us to do some of the collective things that we need to do. So uh, I would say community land trusts are not the silver bullet, but I, as a straight up revolutionary, and I make no bones about it, I am a revolutionary. And by the way, I say I'm a revolutionary for two reasons. One, because it's true, because I'm trying to restructure the social, political, and economic institutions. The second reason, I'm trying to normalize that. I'm trying to help people who also hold in their heart, in their head, the knowledge that we have to restructure everything. Don't censor yourself. Don't let this current system tell us that we're not allowed to say what we know is fucking... Sorry, that we what we know is true. We know it's true. We have to restructure this and our window to do it is closing. So I say I'm a revolutionary because I want to let people liberate themselves to be able to talk about it. So I do think, and I'm going to come to the end and then we'll do a round of just reflections. And remember, you're going to get two minutes each on it. And I see we have uh, 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 Anelike and Veronica who've joined us. I'll drop another uh uh, I'll, I'll, we'll start with you, uh, and then uh, you so uh, so you can react to what you you've heard from, or maybe you know what I'll put y'all at the end uh, of the chat so that so that you can sort of see the the process of sociocratic rounds. But here's how I want to conclude. I don't think that community land trusts are the silver bullet, but I think they're what I call non-reformist reforms. And I didn't make that phrase up. I'll drop a link to this concept. Uh, it's where other theorists actually talk about, it, and that is. They are reforms that are achievable right now, right? So that's what that what makes it a reform. But non-reformist reforms undermine the logic of capitalism. They undermine the system of power over domination. Uh, and so you are not just fighting for the one reform, you're fighting to win the one reform and to build towards a, a, a 
to think about it as revolution, uh, evolutionary revolution, right? Like that's the idea and the non-reformist reforms that I work on as the co-coordinator of the U.S. Solidarity Economy Network, community land trusts, and worker-owned cooperatives, and public banking, and participatory budgeting, and universal basic income, and locally owned energy production and distribution models. My point is that if we actually use the, the mechanisms that are available now, we could literally, community by community, begin a revolutionary process. So with that, uh, Eduardo, it, you know that you're up, and I will uh, uh, drop the this the order back into the chat for everybody. I know some folks came in later, so uh, watch your chat. And what we're looking for is a two-minute uh, response. Eduardo, you're up. Eduardo may not be with us, so let's go to Roger. Um, I'm I'm still processing, so pick me up at the end, if you will, if there's time. Check. Killian. Uh, yeah, I, you know it's been great. I wish you'd been in every session I've been in this whole week because I think I would have been cheerleading each other on and I felt kind of lonely at times saying no we can't just tweak it we got to fix every damn thing um, and really pushing that to the point of like no this we you know economics don't work at the end point not even the things we're talking about here are enough at the end point it's all commons or, or it's commons or nothing and that's it nested commons and you're done and and it's gotten very little you know a little bit a little bit mostly like what <laughs> You know, it's like, it's hard to get people to understand that business economics, as we understand it today, simply cannot be made regenerative. Um, but you, it, when you go down the principles, it's very obvious, very simple. So it's beautiful to hear you saying that out loud as another person with some authority that people might listen to. Really beautiful to hear. Um, and yeah, I agree with you, though. We can't stop there. It does have to get, it has to, we have to work with where we are. There is a transition period. And that transition period is things like land trusts and co-ops and stuff. But after that, we have to understand that after that, we have to keep devolving, not, not devolving socially, but devolving our structures to get simpler and simpler to mimic biomimicry. People have been saying it all week, but not at this point. When we start talking about business, they don't want to go there. We have to biomimic how indigenous people do business. And guess what? They don't do business. That's what they don't do. They don't do business. So that's, it's okay to understand we can, we can, we can use the, the, the powers that be powers against them to get what we want, but we have to end up, we can't just adopt what they're doing and, and tweak it. We have to end up at a place that is completely different that does biomimic indigenous societies. So thank you so much. Well done, Killian. And, and again, uh, so I didn't have to do the timer. So try to keep it to two minutes. If you get to two minutes, I'm just going to raise my hand, which means uh, to, to bring yourself uh, uh, to a start. You must have had a timer, Killian, because you came in right, 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 just perfectly. Clement, you're up. Hi, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to process everything. I mean, uh, for us, Back in Ghana, the the land the yeah the land actually belongs to the the chieftaincy system. Uh, it's for us the chiefs. Uh, what what makes it a little bit a mess is the fact that um, all the minerals and everything underneath is not it belongs to the government. <laughs> so even though we owe the land, but the resources are not ours. And um, like I earlier on said. Um, because the, the population wise, we are the minority, but the land actually belongs to us. So we are not actually controlling much. And um, as a result, uh, economically very much displaced. So we now have um, all the people with economic power now coming to convince the chiefs to buy more land from them because that is only way that somehow they can manage to survive. And uh, gradually they are for, forbidden all the indigenous knowledge that we have. Um, yeah, so for me, it's also quite difficult to know where to place it because also now 
because of um, uh, the lack of economic power, uh, we are we are losing. We are losing the culture. We are losing the traditions. We are losing all the the stronghold, the minerals. Every, we are losing, and I, I don't know where to. to I don't know where to place myself. It's a bit of a desperate because now the chiefs are also now going by the trend of the chiefs uh, of the political system. So now I'm like, <laughs> how do we salvage this? So yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, let me listen to more people and hopefully I can, we can find some solutions, but I'm a bit lost as well. So I guess for me, David, I would really like to circle to um, Isabel's questions. I don't know if I, I still have so many questions that it's hard for me to comment at this point. So I have the same exact questions as Isabel. So I'm just going to give up my time for if there's time for that. Yep. And, and feel free to to, uh, uh, to pass uh, and, and uh, we will get into a round of questions. And, and I have two hours. I know this is only an hour, but just to let folks know if, if folks are able to stay over, we're allowed to do that because there are individual Zooms. Thank you, Kat. Yeah, I'm gonna pass my time and ask you if you could put in your contact email in the chat. Thank you so much. Yeah, so David, I've got lots of questions. I'd love to know more about your community land trusts and how they're functioning. Um, I this is completely fascinating, and I love sociocracy, but I want to hear more from you. <laughs> and you're going to have to forgive me. I'm going to have to leave in a minute because I'm doing a session with Edward Muller on the hour, and I need to go and prep for it. But now you're co-host. I think you'll be completely fine without me. Very good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pass too, and I was hoping Isabel would have time to have her questions addressed as well. I don't have to leave on the hour, but very grateful. Thank you. I second that. Um, I'm, so is it my turn then? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I just want to say, reflect on what you said, David, that um, what it made me think of is that I homeschooled my kids for 18 years. And I know that um, there were way showers, there were pioneers in the homeschooling movement, like in the 70s. And they had to, they needed lawyers, they needed to set up a legal framework so that parents had the choice to educate, to, to educate their kids themselves. Um, and a lot of people didn't really understand that at the time either. And um, it's kind of like, see it kind of like the same, in the same uh, light and that, just because people don't understand it, if enough people and enough people who understand the law start preparing the way, then in a few decades, it will just be obvious that you can create community land trusts. Like now it's pretty, I don't use, when I, homeschooling is more accepted now, much more accepted. Uh, thanks to the people who showed, I mean, and I disagree with a lot of current homeschoolers, the homeschooling movement, like the SDLA, but um, anyway. Um, but I do have also have specific questions about the 